Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today is a very special reunion 2020 episode. What is that? That's when I had a guest on in the past, and I liked him so much I had to bring him on back. So today's special return guest is Tanvir Kasawala, and he's founder over at Pioneer 1890. Tanvir, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much, Adam, for having me back again. It's it's so good to catch up with you. Oh man, so I'll tell you these uh these podcast reunion episodes are some of my favorites. It's like I'm getting the old family back together, getting the podcast reunion going. Um and uh I just want to jump uh, jump right in here because uh, I I know I saw some new things here from you. So Pioneer 1890 is a brand new company that you've launched since the last time we're, we we were on the show. Um tell us a little bit more about it, please. Yeah, yeah, well, thank you so much Adam. Well, you know uh, last time I was on, I was uh, I was the COO and CFO of a venture-backed uh, satellite space company called Analytical Space, um, and and then I was uh, prior to doing that, I was also a, a, a venture uh, venture capitalist and then a venture partner at a startup venture capital firm called Next Gen Venture Partners. And so in 2015, I had launched a, a boutique advisory firm called Pioneer Strategies, which was really focused on being able to help create new uh, technology ventures and really focusing on how do you essentially create a, uh, a business model for a lot of new technologies. And we worked with an underwater drone company. We worked on a solar energy uh, project in Africa. Um, and then, you know, through my experience with kind of, with, uh, you know, at, at next gen and analytical space, I, I came to see and, and, and see there was a really big need is there's now so many resources to get companies off the ground and figure out the right business models. But now there, a lot of, there's a lot of challenges. You have a lot of companies on the venture side, and especially a lot of small businesses that you know have reached have have growth has kind of plateaued, where the the that, that kind of next that next stage is 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 kind of a little bit challenging. And and I've been fortunate enough to have some experiences and and and, and have some, been exposed to a really great network of people um, who've kind of encouraged me to to kind of create this new type of advisory investment firm called Pioneer 1890. And so we added the 1890 to the, to the mix. Because I'm, I'm a big history buff. In 1890 was the year when the U.S. Census declared the West was completely settled. You know, originally up until 1890, you could go, if you wanted to be an entrepreneur or you wanted more resources, you just had to go West and there was free land for the taking. And after 1890, there wasn't any more free land. If you wanted to be an entrepreneur, if you wanted more resources, if you wanted to innovate, you had to come up with a new method or new technologies or a new process. And, and that that was incredibly beneficial for our country. You know, since then we, the industrial revolution happened. We landed man on the moon, and and a lot of the technologies for for you and I, Adam, are, are speaking today. And so we want to be we want us we want to help build. We want to help companies. You know, they 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 found the first frontier. We want to help them find that next frontier. And that's what the the 1890 in the main uh, signifies. Man, that's awesome. That's exciting. Um, what are some of the uh, types of uh, company? I know you mentioned one thing. You said an underwater drone company. You mentioned um, um, what are some of the industries and or um, types of companies or niches that you're looking to work with? Yeah, so we're really focused on um, kind of combining two company stages. Because uh, really now see that as one. So you have initially venture capital is really focused on new uh, business creation and really helping that you know that entrepreneur think some sort of new technology, new service, and, and trying to grow that as big as possible. And then you've also had this this other uh, group of businesses like these small, medium sized businesses. They are usually usually are under 10 million in revenue and and usually are maybe not doing things that are as fast moving like providing insurance to government executives or training for, uh, you know, people who are going to become like aircraft mechanics and doing things that are maybe a little more slower growing. And we really want to combine those those type of um, target both those type of businesses and being able to say, hey, you know, a lot of the, a lot of these venture businesses that, you know, venture, you know, they, they originally were kind of venture backed, but their growth is kind of plateaued because they found out that maybe they're working in a market that's not really conducive to a really, um, you know, the classic, like, let's become a billion dollar company. Maybe there, mm-hmm. it, it becomes, it, it's really more about becoming a more profitable company and really um, developing the market that they usually set out to be. And then on the small business side, there's maybe a chance where, 
a lot of these businesses, whether they have, you know, they may be started 20 years ago by a founder and there may be generational, they may need for a generational succession. Um, so they may be looking for a new management and, and new kind of owners or they're in an industry that, you know, it's kind of slow growing, but if you applied some, some new, like kind of new ideas and new technology, new people, you could really kind of take this set, you know, this company to a next level. And so we re, the kind of the thesis of what brings everything together is we believe that why when a company is founded that the companies all in every organization has some unique dna and that and part that what makes the unique dna of a company is that it's founding it's, it's why it was founded the team that makes up that company and whatever led to that company what like made that first sale that first product or the first piece of revenue uh get through the door and oftentimes as companies grow older and, and companies kind of stagnate they, they tend they kind of lose that unique dna they forget that they had they they, they were they have some um, really powerful competitive advantage. And what we want to do is we basically want to, we have a series of processes and strategies to kind of unlock that unique DNA so they can kind of reach the next, the, the next level. And we can do that. We can, for, we can provide support with our advisory services and our, and, and our kind of advisory network. We can, um, we also can provide capital service so we can invest in them. And in certain situations, we also have, uh, looking at the ability to eventually acquire companies, um, and, and kind of combine them together with other companies to kind of create a platform. So um, you have, I mean, you have a unique, a unique uh, vantage point because you're in the middle of deal flow, you're in the middle of capital. I mean, you have a lot, a lot of moving pieces to what you're doing and, and pulling off what you're doing. Um, so that being said, what excites you right now? Like, what are you seeing either in innovation or in the deal flow that's coming across your desk or otherwise that you're just like, man, this is exciting? I just think that, you know, the, uh, I mean, first off, like my heart goes out to the millions of people who've been so profoundly affected by the coronavirus. Um, but I also think it, it's created a very um, unique opportunity. I think we there's going to be a completely new paradigm that emerges that post post the new world we've been living in, and the business assumptions we've made are, are no longer relevant. And so things like you know the idea that you know for example Silicon Valley was has, was seen as kind of the engine for all the technology talent. Well, now when we have a distributed, we kind of look at remote working, we have a distributed workforce, you know, the, the best engineers, the best companies don't necessarily have to be in Silicon Valley. They can be in places like Boise or they can be in, in, in Southwest Virginia and you can, you can kind of take the best of an international and national talent pool. And so you can come up with really cool ideas that way. I think number two is we now are, um, as, as the, as things have moved online, the cost to start things, the barriers to entry, the barriers to, to be innovative and, and to like test new ideas, I think has gone down because you can, you can, you know, necessarily need a traditional office and the traditional infrastructure that we think of starting a business. And so I think we're going to see uh, a lot more earlier, a lot more new companies being formed as people now are, uh, being kind of displaced in this kind of the old economy. And so there, you know, after that period of these new businesses, we'll figure out if they're going to survive or move on to the next stage. There is now will be the big challenge of how do you take some of those companies and start scaling new solutions faster. And so I think we're in a, in a, in a moment of great change. There's a lot of great opportunities, I think. And, you, and you're going to see this in the healthcare industry. We're going to see this in the real estate industry. We're going to see this in um, um, especially, I think, in the, uh, like the, the technology and the way we work industry. Man, that's awesome. I love it. And I love that you bring up this point about the other soul. And I don't know if, I don't know if it's a real term or if I made it up, but, or, or if somebody else did and I remembered it, but geography bias, just the idea of thinking of the person that's in front of you is the best person for it. Maybe it's not. It's that person, like you said, in Virginia or Texas or otherwise. Um, and maybe they can do the job better. And I, I love that whole thought process. And if that is correct, which in some cases it is, um, then what that means is that just logically the speed of innovation should increase because you have more people doing the right jobs at the right time at the right price. So in theory, like just the, you know, the, the, the pace at which this like uh, innovation is going to happen could possibly increase. And to me, that's exciting because we're going pretty fast already. And I'm like, oh, man, where are we going next after this? I mean, that, that part to me is just really exciting. Um, and so, Tanvir, that being said, I mean, I can talk to you about this all day long, but we're about out of time on this episode. Um, that being said, if somebody's listening to this, and they want more information on connecting with Pioneer 1890. Um, what's the best uh, best way for them to reach out and to connect? So there, we were launching a completely new website it's called it's at www. 
pioneer1890.com. We have basically our, our main resources there, ways to connect with us. And if whether you're a, a business owner trying to struggling with, uh, you know, what to do post Corona and what in, in, and figuring out what you want to like your your business is kind of you need to figure out a new growth plan or you're a, a, a you're a, a technology business that's trying to get to the next round of funding and and trying to get you know you 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 kind of you're ready for that next stage like we want to be helpful we we are in the business of of finding uh, helping companies and organizations grow to that to that next level and we can provide capital we can provide advisory service and we we want to we want to basically build help entrepreneurs build their, their companies and their visions because we um we need that that creativity, that can-do spirit more than ever now. Fantastic. Well, Tanvir, it's been great having you back on uh, this Reunion 2020 episode. Excited to bring you back in 2021, see how the rest of the year played out for you um, for our next reunion. Um, and to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. I hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the uh, Apple iTunes store. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Business, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some comments in the video. I mean, love to know what kind of projects and things you're working on. Let's uh, keep the conversation going over in the YouTube community. And Tanvir, thanks again for coming back on the show.